Awesome. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Midwest Mindset with your host, Paul Tyson. And Jay Patonia. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're live <laughs> and much better. So I'm going to start off this podcast by just with a huge, huge, huge apology. Um, the last podcast, I can't believe I put that out. I should probably take it down. The audio was horrible. So what we're trying to do now is live in our studio, very expensive studio, the back half of my desk. <laughs> we're uh, coming to you. Um, hopefully you can hear us better. Hopefully you can see us better. And um, yeah, so we're going to we're going to get started. How are you doing, bud? I'm doing good. Good, good. So today's topic, we are going to say we talked about this a little bit. Uh, let's do hard things is, is the title for today's topic. So let's do hard things. So when when I sent this to you, what do you, what what came to mind? Um, my my perspective is more on you know, doing things out of your comfort zone, challenging yourself, um, uh, and then also on the flip side, kind of uh, there's a book by Brian Tracy like eat you know eat the frog first or whatever. It's like eat the do the biggest task you have in front of your day right away, so you feel like you get it out of your way and it's accomplished. So sure, eat that frog. I think it's called actually. Okay, but um, so kind of two different areas I, I thought of. Okay. Are you good at doing hard things? Um, not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I am. I'm not on like a daily hab- habitual basis. I don't think I am. Right. I think in overall life, as far as challenging myself, doing things I'm uncomfortable with, I think I am. But if you think of it from a daily fitness and diet routine, I'm definitely hit or miss on that. So, gotcha. Um, so, yeah. But when you, when we talk about doing hard things, um, what what comes to mind like what do you what do you what where does your mind go to right away um you know it it goes to uh you know for example uh just i guess putting yourself in uncomfortable situations right so i at work you know taking on a project that maybe you wouldn't take on and um or you know at home or in the community like coaching or doing something out of your comfort zone that you wouldn't typically do and so right. i think it gets those it enacts your like emotions and you learn how to deal with those emotions, doing those things versus just kind of the everyday flat level going through the motions type of thing. So, sure. um, I, I, I think you hit it on the, on the head. It's, it's getting out of our comfort zones. And I, I think I like starting with that in, in that direction, because when we think of our comfort zone is, you know, when are things easy for us? What, you know, if something comes easy to us, it's maybe it's because you've worked up that resilience, right? You've mm-hmm. got to that point where all of a sudden things are, things are a lot more comfortable and you're like, all right, I've worked hard to get here. But what happens a lot of times for me anyway, is that I get to that point and then I say, now what? And and, and I don't necessarily find that next thing that challenged me. And um, maybe there's a reason why I'm involved in all these different things. You yeah. know what I mean? The coaching business, the hopefully public speaking soon. And I've done a little bit of that um, even recently. And then, and then, you know, the, the city council, all those things. You know, hopefully I'm I'm trying to lead that good example, but to your point, it's the the daily habits that sometimes can be difficult yeah. that I can find difficult. So um what are some of the hard things that you do as an example right now? Um excuse me. Um and it's interesting because right now, not having a day full-time job, it's honestly having a set goal for the day, right? So it's I don't have to be up by 6 a.m. to get to, you know, to my basement office by seven or eight. So it's like, all right, what's my plan for the day? And so making sure I have something to, you know, to not to do, but just a, a schedule or a structure to my day. So it doesn't become a, a waste. And I feel like I'm still accomplishing something by the sure. end of the day. Sure. So. And is, is that working right now or is it good days, bad days? Good days, bad days. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think that's pretty common for, for everybody. I, I even look back to, um, you know, one of the things I think I'm pretty habit driven. I, you know, I talk about it all the time on the podcast. I talk about it in, in my coaching business, as far as, you know, like I, I wrote down, like, what do I do hard, hard things? Well, I exercise every day. Now that might not be a full out, you know, 20, 30, 40 mile on a uh, bike ride, yep. uh, or, or a huge hit class, but I'm exercising every day. I'm walking, I'm, I'm cycling somehow, or I'm in the pool doing laps, doing laps, doing something. So I exercise every day. I take, um, I fast pretty much every day. I'm pretty good about that now. I've gotten to a point where it's just natural for me to eat only at noon and finish eating around eight o'clock. Sometimes I might, you know, pivot a little bit around that, but I I do that. I show gratitude every day. So I journal, I've I've gotten good at that. Uh, Make my bed, journal, you know, all these things that I wrote down here, which is awesome. But guess what? I just had a meeting where I was out 
in a hotel for two days. And then I had a lot of different things going on. I opened up my journal this morning and it said July 10th. Well, you know, it's, it's July 13th. Yeah. So all of a sudden I missed two days. And so what I'm getting at is, is as much as I, you know, talk about being habit driven and being resilient and, and doing those hard things each and every day, I have slip ups. Right. And I think that's kind of a key takeaway. I don't know why we're orange here in this, in this camera light right now, but, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's what I've gotten better at though, is when I do have those slip ups, it's much easier for me to kick right back into it because I've already had an established, yep. um, system in place. So what, what's an example that you do per, on a pretty regular basis? Um, I mean, I think I walk fairly regularly outside. It's partially, it's you know a little bit of exercise, but also it's just kind of time to be alone with my thoughts or just time to, sure. you know, listen to what's around you, things like that. So I don't always have the headphones in. Sometimes I take them out and just try to enjoy a half an hour of listening to whatever and uh, and just kind of enjoying the time outside. So I I love that one, especially, so I've just incorporated like long walks deliberately right after my first breakfast. So what I mean by that is, so if I don't eat until noon and I eat at 1230 or one o'clock and when I break my break my fast, I go eat and then I go for like either a mile or two mile walk yep. afterwards just to make sure that I'm not sitting down at my desk or sitting down in front of a, a computer. And that's helped me because it helps with digestion. Yep. And I found that to be very helpful. So, but to your point, there's another piece of that, right? So there's the exercise, there's moving around, there's being active, showing activity after you just taken maybe some, some, some protein, some, you know, some glucose because you're eating some sugars and stuff. Uh, it's, it's the mental piece of it, right? Yeah. Just kind of clearing the mind a little bit, get off your device. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll listen to a podcast, but a lot of times I just like to turn everything off. Yeah. 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 yeah I have our, well, our neighbor, she runs and never has any like no headphones ever she'll run marathons and really every time she runs she does uses no technology which i need to have it once in a while to wow. listen to podcasts that's pretty music, unusual but it's yeah so shannon will run with her and mm-hmm. you know shannon, most people like to run with music and she's just nothing <laughs> ah that's just interesting yeah, yeah that's interesting that's yeah that's that's pretty impressive yeah um and i think with the habits like the you know, the walking every day or, and I actually intermittent fast too quite a bit. I wouldn't say it's daily, but sure. I usually shut her down, you know, a little later at night, seven or eight, but then I won't eat till like two in the afternoon. And so I would, I'd say I've been doing that at least a few times a week for 10 years, I would say since I worked. Yeah. Since, uh, yeah, since about maybe 2012 or 13, if I remember correctly. So, um, yeah, so that, that's, that's, that's awesome. And so, why do you think though in nature, I mean, this is kind of just a philosophical kind of a bigger question. Why do you think that we like things easy? Why do we, why, why do we, you know, why do we like things yeah. simple? I think because it's easy. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just don't want to stir the pot. Don't want to, you know, you know, there's, and I think there's times where it's fine to just get into that, but I think you have to put yourself in that position to you know think about doing the hard things right you have to i i was kind of in my research of, i came across like stephen covey and even though it's not do hard things with him his seven habits you know one of them is you know with the you know think with the end in mind or you know start with the end in mind so sure. what is the purpose of this habit why do you want to do this every day it's right just i got to do this every day it's like well i want to walk because i'm going to feel good and you know i want to be healthy and you know have you know mental alone time or whatever so I thought that was one of the, you know, kind of a correlation there of, of kind of one of his habits. I, I love that. And I, I think it, it is, you know, there's multiple different philosophies here. And, and when we talk about different philosophies, you know, there's Stephen Covey, there's a business side of things, there's a philosophical side of things, there's a religious side of things. I go to more the obviously stoicism just because I'm such a huge fan. But I think about this quote that really kind of resonated with me. And it resonated with me particularly because I find that the more I do hard things and and fail, the like these are the greater rewards ultimately, yeah. right? Yeah. Like I I take on a new challenge. Like I remember taking on a, a role at a volunteer place where I was a leadership role, and I was just like, "What the heck? I have no business doing this." There's many people in this room that are probably smarter than me, but nobody stepped up, and yeah. so we needed to do that in order to move forward. And after doing it, you know, now in retrospect, I look back, I'm like, "Wow." I mean, not only did I have a lot of the skills that was needed at the time, 
you know, and learned a lot about my leadership style, knowing full well that I don't, it's actually better to not be the smartest person in the room, but it's, it's great to have a leader that can bring smart people together and, and give them the power and empower them to do the right things. And so what I'm getting at is some of the biggest challenges that I, I thought I faced in life. I feel so much better now on the back end of it. Yeah. After I've done it. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is when we're always, when things are always easy and we're not, we're in that comfort zone, I feel like we're not changing. We're not, we're not growing. We're not, you yeah. know, we're not developing. And so this quote comes to mind. And, and of course my screen just went blank. Um, so it's a Marcus Aurelius quote, right? And and it's a famous quote, but it says, the impediment to action leads to action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Marcus Aurelius. And it's, it's the whole premise about the, with the book from Ryan Holiday, the obstacle is the way. The things that we think are our biggest obstacles are in our life, our biggest failures, our biggest things that are, are challenging for us become the most rewarding things to us in, in the world, right? You know, I, I even, you can bring it up in many different scenarios, but one scenario is like having kids. I'll never forget the first time we had to bring Carter home from the hospital. I was like, well, well, well the nurse, you're, you're going to come with us, right? Like what, you, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? I was scared out of my mind, Yeah. but you know, you do it and, and God, now look at it. You yeah. know, he's, he's moving he's going to college and new, new challenges and new things, you know, that are yeah. happening. I mean, but you were there last year with Brady. I mean, yeah. it's, it's going through the struggle of it, going through the hard you know, making hard decisions. And these aren't really that hard. Right. I mean, let's put it in perspective here. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're, you know, affluent people in an affluent situation here with very fortunate, you know, intelligent and smart kids. I mean, we don't face half the challenges yeah. that the rest of the world faces. So the reason why I bring this up is that it's kind of one of those things where it's like, what are we doing to kind of challenge ourselves for that the next thing? I, I think that's the way I look at this. Yeah. I don't know. What are your thoughts? No, I, I, I agree. And I think it's a way to, build, you know, build discipline and build self-confidence too, right? So there's, you know, reasons we do that. And I always think, I always think we spend so much time worrying about that thing up until it happens. And you were kind of saying, right. And then when it's done, you're like, that wasn't that bad, right? Right. You feel, you feel like, man, I did it. And, right. You know, and I think, I think back to even like school back in high school, and had a test the next day and I'm like, I'm, maybe I'm a little sick. I don't want to take that test. Right. Right. I didn't want to do that thing. Right. And so um, or coming up with, uh, you know, a uh, presentation you had to do or whatever, a, a report to, to the class or whatever. It's like, I would think of finding ways to like, how can I get out of this? So I, you know, and, yeah. and it just delays the whole situation. And then, you know, you're, you know, put yourself in a bad spot and then you end up doing it. And you're like, it's over. Right? I mean, it's like you, you, you have all this unneeded concern or right. fear or whatever. Well, it, it's funny because I, you, you say that story. I, I know for a fact, I remember, call, you know, I'm sick, mom. You yeah. know what I mean? Calling downstairs. I'm sick. I have a fever, you know, rubbing my hands together and put it on my face, all of that stuff, just because I had a test that I knew I didn't study for. And that was most of it. Right. <laughs> so I definitely did those things. Um, but what, what I also like about when we show up and we do these hard things and we like, even what you're going through now, I mean, you know, you're, you're looking for a job and you're doing all these things. Your kids see you working, you see, yeah. you know, the resiliency, they see, you know, the patterns of, of, Hey, we get up and, and we do it again. Yeah. Right. Might not be fun. Might not be great. Might not feel good. Yeah. But, you know, that's my job right now is to find a job. So yeah, yeah, yeah. To find, or find, gotta, find something new, find something new. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. For sure. Yeah. So when do you think, um, when do you think you show up uh, at your best um, around doing hard things? I would say when I I know why I'm doing them, like when I think of the purpose, I have, I'm easy. I'm well, the first one to be like, I don't feel like working out this morning. I don't feel like doing sure. whatever this morning. And so I think when I have more of a plan or I have, you know, kind of think through why I'm doing what I'm doing, I think that's, uh, that's one of the, you know, one of the, ways that helps me I also think of starting small right so it doesn't have to be a huge hard thing so I, like I think you've said it before like if you if your goal is to work out every day for 60 minutes and you haven't exercised for a year you're not gonna do it so it's like all right maybe it's getting up walking for 15 minutes doing some push-ups and then yep. you're good you know yeah and so and you know and I think you said this before too but that usually snowballs into you know what I'm up I'm art I'm gonna just keep doing stuff you know so I think you know thinking building small habits or patterns that lead into the bigger you know the bigger picture the bigger patterns I I, I think you're spot on I, I look back at one of the most uh, like where I've had success before in the past right I, I look for evidence 
And so like, if it's working out, it's all right, what, what makes me want to work out? Well, the results do, but guess what? That's a lot of work to get to that point. So what can I do now? Small steps, small things. Well, guess what? I like an accountability partner. Yeah. And and when I'm teaching class, that's my accountability partner. They know I, I have to show up. I have to be there on time. I have to make sure this classroom set up correctly. Yeah. I have to make sure I write this session before the day before I have to make sure I have a new playlist put together. Like I have that, that uh, requirement and that accountability helps me show up better for not only when I teach, but then also when I'm doing the class, yeah. like twice a week, I know that I'm, I'm performing, I'm performing, I'm, I'm teaching a class, but the majority of group fitness, I'm doing the work too, Yeah, you know? And so I, I love that accountability piece to your point you know, might, maybe it's bite size. So if it's, if it's, if, you know, you've had success before by, you know, just starting small, keep st starting small yeah. and do those little things to show up for yourself now. Yeah. Yeah. I and that, that. could be work related too. You know, there's the eat the frog scenario, but there's also get a quick, get a few quick wins in the morning, right. In yeah. your first part of your day where it's like, you got that momentum. You're like, yeah, you know, yeah. just kind of some easy things that you can chop off that at least get you that momentum and, and then lead up to, you know, that confidence into doing whatever kind of hard things you might have to do. Well, in, in the, in the tools book uh, with Phil Stutz, he talks specifically about like a uh, pearl, like a pearl necklace, like collecting pearls, collecting little, little wins. Yeah. Just little wins each day. So he, he said, you know, just like a little pearl, write a pearl on a piece of paper. I got one win today. What did you do? Yeah. I put my shoes on. Right. I put my like, shoes. Maybe I only got to the garage door and I got three texts from, you know, possible client, whatever. Yeah. And, and you didn't get that, but guess what? You put the shoes on. Yeah. I mean, people laugh and I'm sure you're laughing and listening to this, but it is those small wins that can make such a difference, such an impact um, because small wins lead to big things. And that's what I found work for me. To the point where all of a sudden now, I, I it's it's kind of it's kind of like just my this is this is who I am. That's yeah. the other thing I do now too. It's like, oh, are you going to work out today? That's not even a question, right? No, I mean, sure. it just isn't. No, it just it is. isn't because now I not only do I enjoy it, but I, I I do a multitude of different things to set me up for success. So I know that I'm not going to burn. I'm not going to get burned out. You know, yeah. That kind of reminded me of so filling your day with a stack of habits that you chose and you feel can make you better. So kind of you've built this stack of things, these habits that you do and every day that, you know, that um, you've chosen instead of just kind of going with the flow, you know, you, right. what, what these things are to be successful every day. So, well, and, and like I mentioned earlier, life can get in the way a lot of times, right? Why, why do we not stick with a habit? Well, there's multiple different reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is that something, you know, people with young kids at home, I think about, you know, my, my, you know, some, my brother and some other people like, you know, busy schedules and, 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 and different um, meetings that come up, whatever it is, it's, it's the idea of prioritizing your time. I say it at the end of every, in, in every closing of this podcast, to make sure we're taking care of you so you could show up better for taking care of somebody else. Yeah. And I think that's just so important. It's one of those things where it's like, we're so quick to uh, give up on a habit to say, oh, well, I have this big, important meeting. Well, is that more important than really taking care of yourself? Right. And maybe it is at that particular time, but the more we do that, the more you make concessions for that, I found that it doesn't serve me. Mm -hmm. Like I'll have a meeting uh, where somebody will throw it on my calendar and it's during my morning routine. And I'm just saying, no, I'm, I'm busy. I'm, you know, I, I'm in a meeting and my meeting is with myself. Yeah. It, it just is. Yep. And, and, and like I said, I, I, you know, from, from eight to five, I'm doing my, my, my job, but Outside of that time, that's my time. So somebody's like, "Hey, I want to meet with you at 7:30." Nah, that's 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 my. I'm in a meeting. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I have it in my calendar that I'm in a meeting, and the meeting is just me taking care of me. Right. At that, that particular time. Right. Kind of which corny. is an important meeting. I mean, well, kind of kind of corny, but it but it yeah. works for me. No. And sure. once again, this comes from a little bit of a, a you know a point of of luxury. You know what I mean? We have, we have, I have the ability to do that exactly. Yeah. So yeah. as I, as I get a text right now. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. What else, what else do you have? I see you have some other, no, notes. I think that's, you know, like I'll put when I, you know, when you're busy during the day, you put your 30 minute or 60 minute walk on your calendar yeah. and you get overlapping meetings and it's hard to not take them and over, you know, kind of under prioritize your actual, you know, what you're doing good for yourself, you know? And, right which, you know, to make yourself better for others. So it's hard sometimes to, you know, because if you move that, you're more than likely just not going to do it, I think. So. Well, I, I agree. Really, like I said, the, the, you know, the first thing I think a lot of it's easy for people to do is to say no to taking care of themselves. Yeah. And 
if there's one thing you take away from this podcast today is that by doing hard things, take care of yourself first. Yeah. Do those hard things for yourself because taking care of that one last email or making sure that one other person heard you, you know, <laughs> when you get to, you know, that, you know, that end of your, uh, end of your uh, weeks yeah. in your life, you would, you know, you would never say, oh gosh, I wish I would have listened. I watched a couple more, or I looked at a couple more emails or took care of a couple more things. Take care of yourself. Do those hard things for yourself because they're going to help yourself yeah. rather than, rather than, you know what I mean? If you, yeah. I mean, if you're not doing hard things or challenging yourself, if you're not growing, you're not learning, you're not becoming a better person. I mean, right. it's the way to growth really. I mean, so what other tools can we use uh, to, in order to do hard things? Because like I, I go to a little extreme and I, I know everybody gives a nice little chuckle about it, but it's cold plunges. I literally yeah. just bought a new, a new tub now so I can do it in the oh, summer. Nice. My pool's too warm with the kids <laughs> swimming yeah. in the pool. So I can't swim in the pool, but I mean, cold plunges. I, I just got a little tub. Like, all right, I, I haven't done a cold plunge in probably a, a month or two. Oh. I'm like, I, I need to get back in. Yeah. But so yeah. it's, it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be that extreme. Like you said, we can start with small things, but what tools can, you know, can somebody else use to overcome i i do like that as a tool the cold plunge or even cold shower or even just dousing yourself in cold water you know it changes your mindset or it can it changes your kind of what you feel at that moment so it kind of if you're feeling like you're not getting somewhere or something you know you just it can break your mood up it can sure. kind of change your mood i think for the better um i think for me uh check i use checklists um sure you know i'm a little adhd so it, yep. it helps me when i know i have to do something that i'm covering all my bases and it kind of breaks it into small pieces right so yep. uh it's not this huge chunk of big things i have to do it's all these little things you know that i have to do in progression to get to that and that's you know that could be in that exact moment right i gotta do this 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 and this and then i'll that'll be accomplished so kind of breaking it into pieces yeah have you heard of box journaling before mm -mm where they, um, I think it's a tool. It's something you can get out on Amazon is um, where you put it in boxes mm. of certain things, a priority. Oh yeah. yeah. So it's like a checklist, but it's, but it's almost a little bit of a checklist slash journal yep. where you kind of put it in boxes. So in the morning you're like, all right, I have these 15 things I'm going to do. So you literally write these 15 things in the organized box priority. Number one, these have to get done before noon or something like that, or, you know, nice to haves and all these different things, but it kind of puts it into kind of a little bit of an organized yeah. system. Now, that takes a little bit of work, right? Yeah. And so maybe that's a little bit too cumbersome for some people, but I like the idea of another tool, yeah. right? Another tool, another idea, uh, because not everything, you know, resonates with somebody. Um, as think, when, as yeah. you were talking, I, I was thinking, you know, some of the excuses we hear and some of the excuses I've had before is, well, I'm, I'm not a morning person or or that's that's not me. I don't, I don't like, I can't, I just could never take a cold shower. Of course you can't. And, and, and until you until you do it for your first yeah. time yeah. and then guess what there's a reason why people say i freaking love them because they, they feel great so maybe it's take that warm shower get all your showering done get all clean do all those things and then towards the end of the shower just tap it a little bit chillier yeah. doesn't have to be ice doesn't have, and not only that it doesn't have to be yeah it doesn't have to be ice and it doesn't have to be wim hof you know what yeah. i mean like the ice man totally but maybe you get there you know yeah and and so all we're saying is is by doing hard things, we've seen huge benefits. So if there's an opportunity for you to try it, give it a shot. You know, start with small steps. Smart with start with with taking little little steps forward. Maybe it's an accountability partner. Uh, maybe it's the block journaling, some tool that can help you overcome whatever you're trying to overcome. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah, yeah. Any other last final remarks? No, that's that's all I got. That's you get good. you get you got a whole notebook full of, full I know, of I got stuff all, here. All my notes written out. You have yours nicely on an iPad, and I've got a script, chicken scratch on a piece of paper. Hey, it's it's whatever works, yeah. right? You know what I mean. We, <laughs> you, I I love the idea of of putting it down on a piece yeah. of paper. So you've done it there. I've done it on my my iPad here, and it's just a way for people to it's, to collect your our thoughts, you know. And so I, I love that you're doing that. Yeah. So. All right. Very cool. Hey, thank you for listening to another Midwest Mindset. We appreciate you and um, we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Take care.